How's everyone doing today? All right, thank you very much for stopping by. So yes, um, I've been on the line now as a full-time flight attendant working for a US major carrier here in the States for about eight months now. Um, I have pretty much reserved a lot of my opinions about things up until now because I'm still learning, still trying to figure out what's, what is, what isn't, the ups and downs. Um, but now that I do have eight months behind me, I do have a little bit more of an opinion uh, from me personally on what I love and what I hate about being a full-time flight attendant. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. It's great to have you. So let's go ahead and start off with the obvious one. Let's start off with the 10 things that I love. Um, so number one are the flight benefits. I mean, let's be real. That's really where a lot of people just, that that's just where the sparkle is, right? The flight benefits. I am able to fly on my airline as well as my wife, uh, my children, and my parents are able to fly on my airline uh, for free domestically, which is really, really nice. Um, and if we do ever do international, there is a small stipend that we do pay uh, in taxes. So it depends on the country that you go to, but overall, that's kind of how it works. Uh, we do get certain little discounts when it comes to us personally, when we are trying to find more confirmed seating, because the first way, we, the way we do it for free, we have to do standby. Even I have to do standby. We all have to do standby. Uh, but if we do want a confirmed seat, then that would cost us a little bit more money. Um, but overall, I have been doing my flying uh, all standby. Mostly the standby that I do fly is commuting to and from work. Up until now, other than seeing my uh, dad out in LA, I really haven't used my flight benefits to the fullest. I've been too busy working and trying to figure out how to do my job to, to the best I, of my ability, plus learning the ins and outs and everything. So I haven't really taken that benefit for a full spin yet. <laughs> so, but I am planning to, hopefully I might hit something like Tokyo or something like that, but I have yet to do that yet. But, uh, but yes, the flight benefits are something that definitely everyone loves and I love it. It's great to know that I can go see my family in LA or, or uh, Tampa, Florida uh, when I need to, and it doesn't really set me back too much. So it is a wonderful benefit. And, and additionally, my family is able to do the same thing for the most part as well. So it's a great perk, probably the biggest perk to being a flight attendant. So that I would have to say is number one. Number two is that I get to travel to new places. That is so freaking cool. I love vis visiting new places. Um, for example, Chicago is a place that I've always wanted to go to, but I've just never had the opportunity to do in my life. And about two months or so ago, I got to go to uh, Chicago for the very first time and I loved it. I was there for a good, I think 17, 18 hours. Um, we got put up in a really nice hotel in the center of downtown and which allowed me to go explore around town. It was a beautiful, beautiful day and I really loved it. So it's really cool to check out new places around the country that you just might never have been able to go to. Uh, recently, I also did an international trip uh, going over to Amsterdam, and that was the very first time I was in Amsterdam, and man, I loved it. Even though I was only there for about 24 hours or so, it was great a great experience. I took advantage of the day, walked around. I think I probably walked like 12 to 15 miles that day, a lot of walking, but it was awesome. It was really, really cool. So seeing new places is definitely a perk for me because I do love um, new experiences and visiting new places around the world. All right, number three, what I do love is also meeting new people and new crew. Now, sometimes we'll get into conversations with our passengers that are really, really cool. Uh, you know, we hit it off and there might be some nice little conversation going on here and there. Uh, so it's really cool to meet new people, especially when they're coming on board on the plane. You know, I'm always greeting them with a huge smile. Hi, how are you? How have you been today? Welcome, et cetera. Thank you for being here. And uh, sometimes that'll strike a little conversation depending. As far as my crew is concerned, the interesting thing, and here's the one thing that still blows my mind after being here for eight months, is that in my base, a week, with my company, there is a total of about 28,000 flight attendants throughout my company as a whole. 
In my base in Seattle, we have, I think, around 1,700 flight attendants just in my base. And the cool thing is, is that every time I start a new rotation or a new trip, I'm meeting someone new. In most cases, like 98% of the cases, these people I've never met before. I've never flown with them before. So meeting new people on the line and part of my base is a really cool thing for me. Um, there's a chance I'll work with them again, but not a very high chance. It's a very low chance I will ever see them again, especially if maybe one day they transfer to another base away from Seattle. And in that case, it's very unlikely that I'll ever see them again. So it's kind of trippy in that way, but it's kind of cool too. You know, you got to meet new crew and, uh, and just, you know, sometimes you hit it off and you guys go have lunch during your layovers. Uh, sometimes people are more like, no, I'm going to kick back in my room and that's totally fine. So it's really cool to have this camaraderie with all these flight attendants, learn where they came from, how they got there. It's to me, it's very, very cool to, to do. So number four, let's go ahead and that. So the longevity of the aviation career is really, really cool. I always told my friends when I was younger that, man, if I had to do it all again, I probably would have joined the Air Force, maybe become a pilot or whatever like that, if I had to do it all again. Being in the aviation uh, world now as a career for me is a huge surprise. It is not something that I ever planned on. And now that I'm here, I'm really digging the aviation life. It's very interesting. Uh, and there is a lot of longevity in this career. Whether I stay as a flight attendant, I can literally stay as a flight attendant till like, <laughs> till like, like I'm 90 or 100 years old, whatever. There's no age limit on that. Um, right now, I'm looking into possibly looking into the pilot life a little bit. There is a shortened uh, lifespan when it comes to that. But still, overall, my company, you're able to move into different places and to different facets of the avi aviation industry. And I find that longevity uh, a really, really attractive thing to, to what I'm doing now for my new career. So that is definitely something that I love to do. Number five, staying in very nice hotels. I love it. They put us up in some pretty swanky hotels. Let me tell you, um, all are not created equal, of course, and some are nicer than others naturally. Um, but there are some that are my favorite, uh, definitely. Uh, there, we have some beautiful hotels that we're able to stay in. My very first one in Milwaukee was a gorgeous hotel. I love that one. Another one of my favorites is the, uh, you know, the Marriott line. Uh, we, we just have so many nice places to stay and some of the resorts we stay in, in uh, Hawaii when we go over there is a really, really nice treat for us as well. So the places that we're put in, very, very nice. I love being there. It is a great place to just chill out, hang out, recoup, get some rest, get a good meal, the whole nine yards. It's some really, really nice perks. All right, number six. As I mentioned before, visiting family is a really, really cool thing. I have visited my family in Tampa way more often now that I would have ever been able to do before. Before this, I was probably visiting my mom out in Tampa, maybe, I don't know, maybe once every one or two years sort of a situation. Uh, but now, uh, I pick up flights going over to Tampa quite often, and I see her probably once a month, once every two months. The same thing with my dad who lives out in LA, as, as well as my boys who live out in LA and Texas. Um, so, and then my, my wife's family who's also in LA. So we're able to see a family way more often, uh, and sometimes even occasionally some friends. Uh, so it's a really great way for us to keep connected with our family and friends. And I really love that about this job. So that is another great, great thing. All right, another cool thing. I love this. I get to go into the flight deck uh, during our flights. It's really cool. Now, if you know or you don't know, uh, typically with an air uh, airplane, there are typically two pilots. Now, there's always supposed to be a minimum of two people in the flight deck at all times. But when a pilot needs to take a break to use a restroom or to grab a snack or to grab a meal, we as flight attendants have to replace them. So as one comes out, one of us has to go in. Um, and when we spend the, when I spend the time in the flight deck, 
it's only for a few minutes or whatever, but it's such a treat. It's so cool to see the, the landscape of where we're flying. Uh, sometimes it's a nice twilight day. Sometimes it's super, super bright that you can barely look out there. Sometimes it's night, you're able to see all the stars above. Um, and sometimes even you'll see some uh, planes fly alongside you or over you or whatever like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and I just love just being up there in the flight deck. It is a huge treat for me. That is something that never, ever gets old. All right, moving on to number eight. Uh, we do have some discounts. I'm still learning about this one, but we do have some discounts that right now I'm not really taking full advantage of because I'm just so focused on work. But there are discounts that we're able to do like car rentals or or, you know, when we have a when we're in a particular city, we're able to do like one of those city tours. Um, there are other, you know, discounts that we're able to get when it comes to our our gear, like luggage, for example. So there's some really cool discounts that we're able to do. Um, and I'm still learning on this one, but loving the discount. So that is a huge perk as well. Uh, number nine, uh, we can work as little or as much as we want. Sort of. All right. So let me explain this one. As a flight attendant, in order for us to keep our credentials up and um, to stay current, from my understanding, we have to work 540 hours in a calendar year, okay? So as long as you meet that 540 within that calendar year, you're good, you're active, you're current, right? Um, but the thing is, is that you can work a thousand, you can work 1500 hours and make a lot of money if you want to, or just make the minimum. And you can even like take two months or three months off concurrently if you want, and then just, you know, double up on those other months that you didn't work. As long as it totals to about 540 a year, you're good to go. Um, so I love that. I love the flexibility. The flexibility on this job is just, I've never seen anything like it. To be honest with you, I've never seen anything like it with any of the other work that I've ever done in my life. The flexibility is incredible. You want to pick up that trip, go ahead. You want to drop that trip if you're not in the mood to, to work or you're not feeling well or whatever like that. You could post it so that someone else can hopefully pick it up. So there's a lot of different ways that we're able to add jobs or take away jobs depending on the situation. So that flexibility, and being able to work as much or as little as you want within reason uh, is a huge, huge benefit and something I absolutely love about this job. All right, let's go into number 10. Now, I have always been a person who has been mostly self-employed. Um, I had my own graphic design businesses uh, for a while. I was a wedding photographer for about 14 years and I'm also a musician. Um, so all these kinds of jobs have always been self-employed sort of a thing, right? Um, so I've never really had anything to, um, you know, like a 401k or anything like that. But with this job, I'm able to take advantage of my 401k, um, saving up for retirement sort of a thing. And the awesome thing about my company is that they do a pretty good match when it comes to whatever I deposit. Uh, which is great and it's something I definitely <laughs> have to catch up on. <laughs> but it's great. It's awesome to have these perks and something that I've, I personally never had. And it's very generous of my company to give uh, me the match that they're giving me. And uh, I try to take full advantage of it uh, at all turns. And again, just like with the discounts, I'm still learning on what programs there are out there financially for me to take advantage of. Uh, in order, because sometimes these programs, when you do them, they kind of pay you to do them in certain ways, you know? So I'm still learning on that, but that is certainly something that is very helpful for uh, the years to come when it comes to retirement. So those are the 10 things that I mostly love about this job. Now, let's talk about the five things that I'm not too keen about and some that I might even say I absolutely hate about this job. We take the good with the bad, right? So let's do number one. The number one thing that I'm not too happy about, honestly, the number one thing is just being away from home. You know, I like being home as much as I can with my family. Uh, it's always cool to take a break and, and go see the world and everything. But 
When I'm working back to back to back to back, and I'm working 100, 110, 120 hours or more on the line, I don't get to spend a lot of time at home. Uh, case in point, I remember the second month that I was on the line, I think it was, uh, or third, uh, in October of 2023, I only came home twice, the whole entire month of October. I came home twice, and one of those times was because it was a layover from one of my trips. So it wasn't a lot. And at that point, I was based in Detroit, not in Seattle. But doing, being away from home is something that, you know, probably the biggest thing for me. Um, I just miss my home. I miss my family when I'm gone. And I try to be home as often as I can. But again, we got to go out there and pay the bills, right? So that's probably the number one. Uh, number two, when I have an early report time, I have to get up early. Uh, there have been times that I've literally had to get up around two or three in the morning to make sure that I get to the airport by around four so that my flight at five o'clock to get me to Seattle to work, that I make that on time. Because maybe my report time is like six o'clock in the morning or something like that for a new rotation that's starting. So getting up early is definitely one of the things I'm not happy about. It is what it is. Uh, it's not all the time, but when it does happen, we can get a little fatigued and we can get our our uh, rhythm thrown off, our, our sleep schedule is really thrown off, and that can be a really pain in the butt, um, especially if you're really sensitive and really need your sleep. Um, that could be a really big issue. So that is something I'm definitely not keen about, but it is what it is. All right, number three things that I do not like. Wasting time during the day but trying to be productive. So on our layovers, I do try to do my very best to be productive. Whether I'm editing videos or, or learning something, I, I always love to learn, so I'm always on YouTube learning new things, or even going around town, especially in a place that I have never been to. So I do my very, very best to be productive on my layovers, but there are times when, you know, you get tired and you have to rest. But the problem is, is by the end of the day, all I've done is worked X amount of hours and the rest of my day kind of just, you know, floated away sort of a thing. So for me personally, it's one of the things that I don't like when I waste my day. That's why I do my very best to try to be productive and active during my day, even if I have to sacrifice a little bit of my sleep in order to do it. Um, so that's number three. Uh, number four, time passes so incredibly fast. Let me tell you, it, it's crazy. And I think that a flight attendant once explained it to me and I thought, wow, you know what? I think you're right. Because the way we bid for our schedules, if we're in the month of May and we have to typically have, I have to have our bid in for June by around the 12th, the 13th of the month for the next month. So it's kind of weird because it kind of psychs us out. If we're already in, not even in the middle of May, but we're already thinking about all of June, we're almost like living in the future in a way mentally. And by the time we get there, we're like thinking June schedule. Meanwhile, we haven't even finished May. And it's a little weird because it just goes by really, really fast. And it's probably one of the reasons why time flies so fast. Not to mention the time changes, not to mention, uh, like I said earlier, sometimes we have to get up really early or we arrive somewhere really, really late. Um, so there's a lot of shifting that's going on in time and it makes things go by very, very, very fast sometimes to the point where I'm like, wait, what day is it? What time is it? And where am I in the world? It's, it's a pretty weird thing, but it is something that you have to kind of just get used to. But then again, you kind of never get used to it and you're always having to ask where you are and what day it is. So that's something that's pretty funky for me. Um, and then number five, the probably one of the biggest things that I hate is spending money for hotels and food because it eats away at my paycheck. So let me explain. When we're on a rotation, we don't pay for the hotel during that rotation. But if I have to get there early the day before, before my rotation begins, and I need a hotel in order to, you know, to sleep and rest, 
then, I, then that comes out of my pocket. If at the end of a rotation, it's we got in so late that there's no more flights for me to get home, guess what? I have to now get a hotel to sleep again and then try to get home the next day after the rotation. And for that, I also have to pay. So there's, you know, again, good and bad, but sometimes depending on the schedule, I will have to spend money on a hotel in order for me to rest before and after a rotation. In addition to that, I have lately not been taking my home, my, my food from home. And the reason has been that I found that when I did, I, I was packing like two or three days worth of food with me and I did take it with me. But depending on the hotel, some of them have refrigerators, some don't. Some of them have microwaves, some don't. So the problem has been for me that, you know, my wife has, you know, packed some food with me for me and I go and I have found that in a lot of cases that food spoils because I haven't been able to maintain the coolness. Even though I have those cool packs, they melt over time. And if I can't refrigerate my food because there's not really a refrigerator in this particular hotel, then that has been one of the big reasons why I've lost a lot of food in that sense too. So what I've been doing lately is not taking any food with me, eating a really good meal before I leave uh, work home and try to eat a really good meal like once a day while I'm on my rotation and just eat like once a day. And that's been a way for me to minimize my cost, my food cost, but it's still a cost and it is something that still eats away at my paycheck. So those are the two biggest things that eat away on my paycheck. Uh, sometimes I'll have to buy some more gear or some more clothing, uh, of course, toiletries and things to that nature, uh, things that you're just going to need for the everyday sort of a thing. Uh, but that's just normal, I guess. Right. But it is those two little things, the hotel and the food that does tend to eat away paycheck. And um, I don't know how much I've spent so much, but it's something I'm, I have to calculate. And honestly, I'm a little afraid to because <laughs> I don't know how much I've spent. Uh, and sometimes I go a little overboard, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I really need a good meal today. I really need solid, real food. Uh, but of course, as you know, that costs money. But even doing some fast food nowadays, it's it's gotten expensive. Fast food is not as cheap as it used to be, too. Um, but again, trying to minimize cost, we try to do the fast food. But again, it doesn't turn out to be that cheap anyway. So anyway, so those are the things that I hate mostly about this job. All right, guys. Well, that is it. There we go. Ten things that I love and five things that I hate about being a full time flight attendant. And if you are thinking about becoming a flight attendant or just want to know more about the aviation life, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. I'll give a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. All right, guys, I've got more videos coming up very, very shortly. We're going to be talking about some more in-depth things and probably start going into a little bit of pilot life. Uh, you know, I'm taking a peek at that and seeing how that's going to work out, if at all. Uh, so stick around for all of that. All right, guys, this is Valencia Flyer. Hope you're doing great, and we will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.